Thank you, ladies. Of course, today is Communion Sabbath, and uh, so what a beautiful and fitting song to lead us into communion. Now, today we're going to break the bread and we will share the juice. We, we will refrain from the foot washing service. Um, we've had, as you know, we've had several COVID cases in our church, and we want to be as safe as possible. And so we will have the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the juice. But before we do that, I want to first have a, a word of prayer, and then I want to ask you a question. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we just pray that you would be with us now, uh, lead us and guide us, for we ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. A question. Are you content? Are you content? Are you content with your church? Are you a, a person who cannot wait until 9 o'clock on Sabbath morning so you can get in your car and get to church by 9.30 so you can participate in Sabbath school? Are you content with the service in your church? Are you content that we begin at 10.30 and not 11 o'clock? Are you content with the people that come to the church? Or would you prefer some maybe not bother coming? Are you content? What about your family? Are you content with the pathway that your children are taking? What about your home? Are you content with your... Is it too big? Too small? Is it just right? What about your neighborhood? Are you content with your neighborhood? Or is it just a stepping stone to the neighborhood that you really want to be living in? And what about your neighbors? Are you content with your neighbors? What about the guy who cranks up the lawnmower every Sabbath morning at 7 a.m.? You know the guy. Are you content? What about your job? Are you content with your job? Can you not wait until Monday morning so you can get in and start work? Do you get depressed when 5 o'clock rolls around because now you've got to go home and, and you, you, you won't be working? Are you content with your job or is it too just a stepping stone to another job that you have your eye on? Are you content? You know, the story is told of a Persian man by the name of Ali Hafed. Ali was a very wealthy man. He owned lots of land, lots of livestock, lots of orchards, lots of grains, lots of uh, uh, gardens. And he was pretty content. One day, a visitor came to Ali's home. And as they talked, this visitor started to tell Ali about diamonds and how beautiful they were, and how wealthy he would, how much more wealthy he would become if he could only get his hands on a diamond mine. Ali Hafed went to bed that night a poor man. Poor because he was now discontent. Craving the, a mine of diamonds, Ali sold everything he had on his farm, his orchards, his gardens, and off he went in search of these rare stones. He traveled the world twice looking for these diamond mines that would bring him extra wealth and more contentment. He traveled the world twice and finally he became so poor and so broken and so defeated that he committed suicide. One day, the man who purchased Ali Hafid's farm led his camel into the garden to drink. And as the camel put his nose into the brook, the man saw a flash of light from the sands at the bottom of the stream. He reached in and he dug out a little stone, a bright stone. He pulled out a stone that reflected all the hues of a rainbow. The man had discovered the mine of Golconda the most magnificent diamond mine in all history. Had Ali Hafed remained at home and dug in his own garden, he would have had acres of diamonds instead of experiencing hardship 
and death in a strange land. The more we want from a human perspective, the less we have. Being content with what we have is not an easy thing. Let's be honest. It is not always easy to be content with our job, with our home, with our neighbors. It's not always an easy thing. For some of us, we have to have the latest fashion and clothing, and it drives us crazy if we don't have the new, tre the new treads. For some of us, we've got to have the latest and the newest and the greatest electronics, the most updated iPhone, the most updated iPad. Nobody really wants Android stuff, but because we want the best, right? <laughs> and so, so we, we crave the best, and we, we always want something different. And you know, advertisers bombard us with the things that they tell us we cannot live without. We have to have, you have to have the new iPhone 93. You have to have the new Tesla, whatever it is. When we buy into this type of thinking, brothers and sisters, discontentment will set in. And before long, we will find ourselves in the middle of an endless cycle of always wanting more and more and more. And when that happens, we will find ourselves becoming more and more discontent. I want to share with you some Bible passages about contentment and what, what the Bible says. Very interesting. Look at this text on your screen. There's only a few of these texts now, and then we'll get to our communion service. But in Proverbs 15, verse 16, it says, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble with it. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and the trouble that comes with it. Fearing God, brothers and sisters, is a good thing. And it brings satisfaction. It brings contentment. There's another proverb, Proverbs 27, verse 20. And it reads like this, Shoal and Abaddon are never satisfied, and neither are the eyes of man. Now, Shoal, Shoal in the Greek we know as Hades, hell, the grave, uh, but it's interesting, in the Hebrew, there is a wonderful translation for Shoal, and it's, it's translated this way. It says, the all-demanding world. Now, I like that. The all-demanding world is never satisfied, and neither are the eyes of man. The word Abaddon simply means destruction or the destroyer. It's also used in, in, in Revelation 9-11 when it talks about the angel with the key to the bottomless pit. So, brothers and sisters, this text is telling us that the all-demanding world and the destroyer of souls is never satisfied. And neither are we. Neither are the eyes of man. You know, a man once saw a bald eagle. You know, yesterday I was cycling. I was doing a little cycling yesterday afternoon. I was going through a neighborhood, a country neighborhood, and this huge bird came and landed on the fence. And at first I thought it was a vulture, and then I looked again. I thought, oh my goodness, that's, that's beautiful. It's a hawk. It was a gorgeous red, red tailed hawk, I think you call them. And about, by the time I got my cam stopped and got my camera out, it was gone. But, but this particular man, he was once uh, walking in. in in his little country path, and he saw an eagle, and the eagle was circling overhead. And eventually, the circles got smaller and smaller, and the man looked over in the distance, and he saw a weasel that had cowered down in the ground. And before long, that, that beautiful eagle just swooped down like a jet out of the sky, and he grabbed that weasel with his talons, and he began to fly off. But the weasel... The man watched as the weasel struggled, and the weasel began to chew on the eagle's leg, and then began to chew on the eagle's breast. And the man watched as that eagle folded up and crashed to the ground, and the weasel went on its merry way and went on with its day. 
You know, friends, it occurred to me that getting what you want does not always work out the way you think it's going to. Sometimes the things we want will ruin us. Have you ever heard somebody say, I prayed and God didn't answer my prayer? My prayer. Sometimes the things we want will ruin us. God knows what we need. And he provides our needs, not our wants. So, but we, we should understand that things, material things, things do not satisfy. Because no matter how much you have, you're always going to want more. You know, there's story after story after story of people who win the, won the lottery. And they're, oh, we've got everything we ever wanted. Now. And, you know, three years later, five years later, they're dead, they're in jail, they're broke, they're filing bankruptcy. What? Brothers and sisters, things will never satisfy you. Things will never bring you contentment. Because we always want more. Now, there's a text in 1 Timothy I want to share with you. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. It says, but godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. So if you want great wealth, then brothers and sisters, godliness is where to find it. So Paul writes, godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of this world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be what? Yeah, but you know what? Who does Paul think he is? Why should we listen to him? Well, the truth of the matter is, for the most part, we don't listen to him. Because we want more, and we want more. And, and Paul is telling us here, God is telling us through Paul, he's saying, listen, I'll provide you everything you need. I'll provide you clothing. I'll provide you, I'll provide what you need. Godliness with contentment is a very beneficial thing for any one of us to have. Because it helps us see that our possessions on this earth are only temporary. Every possession is a burden. My friend Ken Kephart said that years and years ago, and I never forgot that statement. Every possession you own is a burden. Amen. You think about that for a minute. You own a, a, a bicycle, you, you got to put new tires on it. You got to put a chain on it. You own a motorcycle, uh, you got to put gas in it. You got to pay insurance for it. You own a car, you own a house. Every possession is a burden. And yet we want more burdens. But doesn't, doesn't God, and maybe we're claiming the promise in, in Matthew 11 where Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And, and, and our rest, our satisfaction, our contentment is by placing our burdens at the foot of Jesus Christ. But that doesn't mean our motorcycles and our bicycles and our fancy cars. That's not what he's talking about. So brothers and sisters, the question now is, what are the keys what does the Bible tell us? What are the keys to contentment? Look at this passage in Psalm 73, verse 25 and 26. Who have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Oh, I pray this should be our prayer each and every morning. Even before you get out of bed, we should look to open our eyes and, and, and just say, Lord, there is nothing. Whom have I in heaven but you? There is nothing I desire but you. Brothers and sisters, that is where true contentment lies. That is where you will find contentment. Our focus and our desires should be on God and on God's way. You're all familiar with this text. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. Now, I don't want to be accused of being a, a false teacher. So let me clarify that statement. 
If we seek first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness will be added unto you. But when it says all these things, he, Paul, they're not, Jesus is not talking about a new house, a new job, a better car, a bigger bicycle. Uh, that's, not, that's not what he's saying. These things, these things, Lord, uh, brothers and sisters, are not material things. They're spiritual things. These things are, is the armor of God, the things that we need to build up our spiritual life, the things that we need to draw us closer to Jesus Christ, the things that we need that will bring us to a point in our lives where we can finally be content just where we are. Our passion, brothers and sisters, should be towards the things of God. One final text, Philippians chapter 4. Verse 11 through 13. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. content. Wow, that's a hard line right there. In whatever situation I find myself, I am to be content. I need to work on that. I know you all are okay in that area, but not me. I need to work on that. Paul goes, on, uh, uh, um, Paul goes on to say to the church at Philippi, he says, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And then look at verse 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Through Christ that brings me the contentment that I so seek and desire. You know, the story is told of a pilot who always looked down intentionally over a certain valley in the Appalachians when his plane crossed overhead. And one day his co-pilot, who was obviously pretty curious about this, one day his co-pilot mustered up the nerve to ask the pilot, what's so interesting about that spot? And the pilot responded and he said, do you see that river there? You see that little stream that goes into the river? Do you see that big log that sits down there? He said, when I was a boy, when I was a boy, I used to go and sit on that log and I would fish all day long. And I was so content. And when a plane would fly overhead, I would look up in the air and I would say to myself, oh, oh, I would look up and say, I wish I were flying that plane. Now I look down and say, I wish I were sitting on that log fishing. <laughs> It's always tempting to think that others have it better than we do. And that if we, would just, if we just had a little more, everything would be just fine. But brothers and sisters, contentment cannot be achieved by increasing possessions. Nothing will ever be enough. No, jo no home, no neighborhood, no church, no job, no amount of money, whatever it is, nothing will ever be enough until we realize that in Jesus Christ is found contentment. Be grateful, brothers and sisters, for what you have. Be grateful for the circumstances that you find yourself in today because in those you can learn of the strength of Jesus Christ. Be focused. Are you focused? Are you focused more on what you do not have as opposed to the things that you do have? Learning to be grateful and taking time to thank God for his blessings can go a long way in helping us to become content. Are there other areas this morning in your life that you're struggling with? That you're struggling to be content in? Is it your job? Is it your life circumstances? Is it your lack of popularity? You know, the Bible verses that I shared with you today 
only begin to speak of how we can have true contentment. I would encourage you this morning to continue this study on contentment. Take it home. Make it a matter of your morning devotions. Look up some more text. Use the text that I have as a base. Spread out. Search the Bible. Search the Word of God. And allow God to bring true contentment into the very portals of your heart. May each one of us, brothers and sisters, not be characterized by our pursuit of things, but by our pursuit of God and his will in our lives. For in this, my friends, comes true contentment.